This is question 2 from paper 2 of the 2015 SQA Curriculum for Excellence Higher Maths exam. We're given a couple of functions, f, g, given their formulae, and in part a we're asked to find an expression for f of g of x. Now that means f after we've done g of x. And just to remember what goes on here, that if we have g of x being put into the function f, we've got to decide what on earth f does to things. Now the formula involving f tells us that if you put x in, you'll get 10 plus x out. So if 1 goes in, 10 plus 1 comes out. If 5 goes in, 10 plus 5 comes out. If a goes in, 10 plus a comes out. So whatever goes in, 10 is added to it. So let's have a look at this. g of x is going in to f, and we certainly know what g of x is. It's this big expression up here. 1 plus x times 3 minus x plus 2. So that's what's going in to f, and therefore 10 is added to that. Because that's all that f does to whatever goes into it. 10 is added to it. So let's try and sort this out. 10 plus, let's do first outsides, insides last. The first give us 3. Outside 2, minus x. The inside 2, 3x. And the last, negative x squared. And we've got a plus 2. So let's sort out the numbers. 10 plus 3 is 13, plus 2 is 15. Minus x plus 3x is plus 2x. And we've got a minus x squared. So there's an expression for f of g of x, the composition of these two functions, f and g. So let's now have a look at part b. It then says we have to rearrange this, or to reformulate this, or express it in a different way. And this is you're completing the square. So we're now wanting to express this as the product of two brackets, where each of these brackets is identical. We won't manage it. There's adjustments. We have a number outside here, p, and we've got a number that we have to add at the end. So, but basically the essentials are two brackets that are identical multiplied. That's where we get something squared from. Now, the main problem here, I would suggest, is this negative. Let's write this in a more normal order, where we have our x squared term followed by our x term followed by our 15. So the x term, x squared term is negative 1 for the coefficient, the x term is positive 2 for the coefficient, and the constant has is a 15. So that negative can be dealt with by taking it outside brackets. We now essentially have a negative 1 times x squared, negative 1 times negative 2x would give us the plus 2x, and negative 1 outside the brackets times minus 15 would give us a positive 15. And this is beginning to look a wee bit easier, that if we have an x squared minus 2x minus 15, and we're attempting to write it in the form of two identical brackets, then we know we have an x at the beginning of each bracket, and the outside two and the inside two have to be identical, and both combine to give us minus 2x. Each of them must be a minus 1. There's your minus 1x for the outside two, and a minus 1x for the inside two. And that makes the lasts plus 1. So this is wrong. When we multiply this out, we get our x squared, we get our minus 2x, but we get a plus 1. And I think it's clear that you'd need a minus 16, a 1 minus 16 to give you that minus 15. So there's an extra minus 16 needs to go on the end of that. So let's put this down. We've got an x minus 1 times an x minus 1, 
that's an x minus 1 all squared and minus a 16. And of course there's this negative outside, so let's just rewrite it by multiplying out the big square brackets. Negative 1 times x minus 1 all squared. Negative 1 times negative 16 is plus 16. So if you compare that with the way they wanted it written, p lots of x plus q squared plus r and you're comparing minus x minus 1 all squared plus 16. Yes, we've got it in that form. p is negative 1, q is negative 1, and r is 16. We're not asked to give the values of p, q, and r, just to write it in that form. So there it is, in that form. Now the last part of the question, we're told there's another function h of x, which is 1 over the function that we've just worked out. So it's 1 over this expression. Now I'm going to write this as 16 minus x minus 1 all squared. So long as the 16 is still positive and the x minus 1 all squared is negative. Now the only difficulties we get to with a function like this are when we attempt to divide by zero. It's the, the first commandment of mathematics, thou shalt not divide by zero. So the problems arise only if 16 minus x minus 1 all squared is equal to zero. Now that'll happen if x minus 1 all squared is 16. 16 minus 16 is 0. That'll only happen if the number x minus 1 that we're squaring is either 4, because 4 4s are 16, or negative 4, because negative 4 times negative 4 is still 16. And so that happens if x is 5, 4 x minus 1 equals 4 if x is 5 or x equals minus 3, negative 3. We're adding 1 to both sides of these equations. And let's check it. Negative 3 minus 1 does give you negative 4. So the question says what values of x cannot be in the domain of h? So x equals 5 or x equals negative 3 cannot be in the domain of h. Otherwise we would be dividing by 0. Now check it. Put 5 in there. 5 minus 1 is 4. 4 squared 16. 16 minus 16 is 0. 1 divided by 0. You can't do it. Check negative 3. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 16 is 0. 1 minus 0 cannot be done. So there are the two values that cannot be in the domain of H.